Okay, hi everyone. This is my update for what I've been doing in Diablo 4. Um, I'm not grinding the bosses. I'm just going to wait till the next season where you can um, reset them right there. Um, it's a big waste of time to go after Uber Uniques for a season that's almost done. Uh, I do have the Hanukkah Crest because I crafted it with the sparks you get this season. Um, this is going to be a guide for Bash, because Bash is insane, the most insane spec this season. Um, I have a feeling this is getting nerfed by a lot. Um, I played like 1 through 70 as Whirlwind. I, as soon as I unlocked Whirlwind, I think, I just Whirlwind in like 1 to 75, and then I play um, Double Swing from like 75 to 100 with the... Uh, pair of gloves that like makes double swing really good and i did try all the tornado builds it was fun i like dust devils but uh yeah these right here i played it with a set of these this isn't the exact set but they're in here somewhere um and then i decided you know what i want to be really lazy um i had no idea bash was insane actually until i looked it up all I did was uh, temper one of these, and I noticed the uh, Bash Cleaves power, and I'm like, wait, is Bash really good? And then I was like, wait, it's also a generator, so like, resource, it's also built that doesn't even use resource. So I'm incredibly lazy, and I uh, always want to play something that's like one button, which this pretty much is. Technically, you leap around a bunch, but uh yeah it's basically one button so let's go over the gear Holler twin crest obviously this is the one you craft if you can if you can it's plus four to everything um it's often male just shadow resist big armor um the tempers are kind of bad the total armor brings my armor way over cap which is fine I got lucky on the total armor roll there, I think. But uh, this is mostly for the shadow resist. And the, it had greater apexes, so... I master work some strength, so that's nice. Uh, Pain Gorgers. This one I found is insane. I, uh, max roll on the unique power and max basic damage. And it mass work basic damage again. Um, these legs are my most recent. I actually traded for these for once. Um, well, I guess I'll talk about the aspects. Obviously, basic skills get damage reduction. Uh, literally, it's just twenty percent DR all the time. It's like wearing this again. Um. This is self-explanatory, it just helps, it makes the AoE good. Um, I bought these because it had plus four to bash, and then I master work one, uh, plus one more to bash. You can master work this up to plus eight bash, but I'm not running the pit like a hundred times to try to roll that. I'm just going to live with this. Uh, the cold res on here caps my cold res. And actually, two con concussion is insanely good. Because um, it helps you stagger bosses. I wish it was 3D Concussion, but again, I'm not going to remaster work this to try to grow like stuff. It's too much. I don't want to run any more pit. I'll, I'll try maybe next season the Infernal Hordes. Maybe it gives you a decent amount of materials. Um, there's a variant of this build that I played for a while where it's single shout. Um, it's actually technically better, but I, like, again, I want to be lazy, just want, like, one button all the time. Uh, where are they? I don't see them in here. Yen. Oh, there they are. Uh, basically, you wear these boots, but then you only have Rallying Cry, and this will cast it, um... Every eight seconds, 
So you cast Friendly Cry once, and then every other one is free. It just casts for you. Uh, that's the sh single shot variant. Um, yeah, I didn't like it a whole lot. I wanted to play with these Insano boots that I found. Uh, so what happened here is they master work move, movement speed max. Uh, so I'm, I'm really fast. Um, max life strength. Everything on here is good. Uh, four to outburst is whatever. It's more thorns. It's cool. I like. I like the four to outburst. It's fun. Basically, when stuff hits you, it reflects like. 10% of the damage back to itself. Um, this aspect, casting five skills, which is your cooldown, basically bash so much that this this feels like every time you see like more than two monsters, you're, get, you're getting the uh, two second reduction. It's another reason I like this over Yen's, because the it can reduce the um, ultimate we'll talk about in a second. Dread Mace of the Moonrise. This is just masterwork to shit ton of damage. Big bash. Leave. And uh, it's another basic skill synergy. It's basically, when you hit things five times, you gain 160% attack speed. It's insane against bosses, obviously. And then, obviously, uh, Topaz is for basic damage. Now, I'll talk about something when we get to this two hand sword. Um, another one with just a bunch of damage, max life, damage, damage, strength, everything damage all the time, bash cleaves, obviously. Yet another one, great epic strength, damage, damage, bash, and masterwork bash again, so I think everything masterwork bash except for this one. <clears throat> Yeah, let's talk about the sword last. This necklace is actually insane. Um, if you're going to run Uber Uniques, obviously Melted Heart here makes you like invincible because you're always bashing, you always have Fury. And it reduces the damage you take by 75%. And it just drains your Fury, which who cares because you're infinite of it. So if you had Melted Heart here, you'd actually be invincible, but I think I'd lose like half my damage. Um, I scuffed it by trying to roll the uh, last stat to just flat damage instead of roll damage to crowd control. But that's fine because I stagger bosses in the pit and it's just 60% damage when I stagger the bosses. So it's scuffed, but not all the way. Um, obviously, Topaz for the max, like my lightning resist even more because I have max all resist. I need to check after this video to see if I can take this topaz out. I'm not sure. Not that it matters. It's it's going to get a different jam anyway. But um, another insane ring that I found playing damage damage crit again. The other thing on here that's bad is the resource gen. From when I was playing uh, whirlwind, uh, the resource gen actually works with your paragon nodes that say fear for kill. So that's why this is has a resource gen. You should roll anything but that, but I can't uh, temper it anymore, so. Um, this ring is also like a scuffed one. Damage to distant is really bad. Uh, chance to restore resource does, also does nothing. But it masterwork by the three stats on here. So yeah. Oh, I forgot to talk about the aspect still. I'll go back. Um this one I just got the uh, maxed out. Basically, basic skills always del hundred to hundred percent more, because again, you're always capped on fury, so um rage or whatever it's called now. And it masterwork. Plus eleven percent strength, which is insane. 
War Cry uh, cooldown is okay. Uh, the aspect on here, I don't even have a max Bold Chieftain. You don't even need to put Bold Chieftain on here. It's just more cooldown when you when I press a shout. Uh, my ultimate goes down to the cooldown, which is nice. Oh no, it reduces the oh, it shouts themselves. Whatever. It all funnels into my ultimate going down. And again, just to resist gem. Let's get these all 70. Um, this aspect is kind of required. Reduce the cooldown elite by 5 seconds. Basically what this reads is if you hit more than 2 enemies or a boss, leap has no cooldown. Um... You obviously want the 5 second one, but you could probably get away with like a 3 second one. You obviously don't want the 2.5 second beginner aspect. I think you'd be okay running 3. Anything over 3, you leap is always off cooldown. Now I'll talk about the big, um, ass action axe. Uh, I wish it was a sword, because it would just be flat crit damage instead of damage to healthy. But, I dropped this, it's got Insano Strength, Damage Damage, again, uh, and Bash Cleaves. Obviously, basic skills increase attack speed. Makes your Bash, like, feel like you're using, like, one-handers with the Frenzy. Um, the difference in this build is if you were to find the Grandfather, it would be unique. You might want to actually wear the Grandfather, and put green gems in, because they'll double dip. What the Grandfather says is it increases your critical hit damage by 100%. But what it doesn't say is you think that's just 100%, but it's not. What it actually does is it takes this number and doubles it. So I would have 1,800 critical strike damage if I had the Grandfather on. I'd lose basic skill attack speed. Actually, I think you'd, you'd put it on here and just not run Moon Riot up. Yeah, you wouldn't have Moonrise, I don't think. But I'd lose, um... I'd lose Bash Cleaves for a lot, and basic skill attack speed. So maybe you can't... I don't know, I don't have a Grandfather up to desk, but maybe you actually wanted to run two, two of these, and Grandfather's actually bad. But I don't see how 1800% critical strike damage could be bad. That sounds insane, and it's probably more because swords come with crit hit damage, so... Probably, like, if I got a grandfather, probably, like, 2,000% would be here. So... I'm gonna, um... On non-season one, we can reset the bosses. I'm gonna run Duriel a bunch of times to see if I can get it to test. But we ain't doing it now. I just got done running the pit, like, 300 times. I don't feel like resetting dungeon bosses. Uh, talk about the skills a little. I have you actually need Harlequin Crest to do what I'm doing exactly. If you don't have Harlequin Crest, you can use Tarnhelm. Tarnhelm is really good actually for this, but this uh, Harlequin Crest really helps because then you can put Iron Skin as your extra button. This doesn't really do anything for you, but it's nice to like have a button that you, if you press by accident, at least it doesn't like, it doesn't uh, detract from the gameplay any, it's just give a free barrier. Um, if you don't have Iron Skin, you run the Hoda version. You put a point in Hoda and then a point in its two nodes. Um, I'll do this quick too, but... Basically, if you don't have Harlequin Crest, you run this, this, and this. Um, you get 30% more damage. It's fun. I played it that way for like a day. Um, but I like just pressing nothing with Bash. So, if you're wearing Tarnhelm, you go this way. And you drop these three points to do it in heavy-handed. Anyway... Uh, I guess I'll go through the skill tree. Obviously, Bash maxed. 14 out of 5. Um, 
Enhanced Bash is good, and it gets you to the next node. Uh, these two don't do anything. However, if you go the, the Holder route, you do actually need to run Combat Bash. Uh, this makes it so you bash four times, and then you hammer. You bash four times, and then you hammer. That's, that's actually the rotation. The way I'm playing it, you only bash. You don't do anything else. Um, you skip this entire tree. You don't need any points here. Uh, you come down here. Uh, imposing presence. And Vicar just makes it so you can actually fight elites. I don't need these. Uh, for the pit. Yeah. Rallying cry. There's a point in rallying cry. And you get... Um, you don't need resource gen ever. So you actually get strategic rallying cry in this build. Basically, this just makes your fortify never go off when you have this shout up. But the shout really, the reason you're running it is really unstoppable. Um, you need a source of unstoppable, and again, with the Yen's version, you shout all the time. With this version, it the cooldown's enough to where you also have it up most of the time. So that's cool. For a while, I would also experiment with running Challenging Shout instead of Iron Skin. Uh, this is cool, but I kind of like my, I kind of not what, I kind of like not using Iron Skin ever if I can avoid pressing the button, so that these two are always the one getting the cooldown reduction. Um, you're gonna see that leap it has pretty much has no cooldown. I'll show you. I'll do a run. Yeah, you can run Challenge and Shout here. But again, Iron Skin is just... Uh, it doesn't hurt to get a barrier every once in a while. And it doesn't detract from your cooldowns. These getting reduced. Next, I picked Warcry. One point here. Uh, the one point here is only to get the one point here. You just get four seconds of Berserking every time you press this. This is just more damage. You probably don't need Warcry either in this build, but I like it. Swiftness, again, in Blizzard games, it seems to be that movement speed is the best stat, no matter what. You want this. Again, you run around town, town is lava, but everything you do, you want it to be faster, right? Um, every god I've seen has a point in Rain Leader. I don't, because it seems in the pit, but the pit levels I'm running... You either get one shot or you, you either one shot everything or you get one shot, so it doesn't matter if you're healing. Um, the booming voice, obviously, you want your shots to last longer always. Guttural yell, really cool. Um, you just take less damage when you have a shout up, which is, again, it's like all the time. Um, five, yeah, five points in leap. So the max cooldown and enhanced sleep. You actually probably don't need this um, because you're leaping into monsters and you kind of don't want to use this. Even though it says mobility, that's not what it's for. You'll see in the gameplay, you're doing leaps so that you can get an earthquake going. I just have this here in case I get a channeling shrine. This basically makes it so just leap like the next screen if I get a channeling drone. You don't need this point. It's fine if you put it there. More mandatory points. 12% DR while berserking. Uh, again, you're always leaping into stuff, so this just gives you more this guarantees berserking, actually, for 3 seconds. Uh, you don't need prolific fairy. We don't care about rage gen at all. Okay. Um, pet fighter probably mandatory. You gain this. The most important thing is you gain six percent uh, distant damage reduction. This stops like moon killing impalers from like just really hurting you. Uh, you could do slaying strike, but you don't really damage dealing against injured. Again, they should be one shot. So who cares if they're injured? Um, thick skin. Always a mandatory, but it's a one-pointer. 
because you're getting four to five from your shouts and like everything else that Barb does. This point is only to get these two. Uh, you definitely want these two in cap. This gives you 12% damage. You're always fortified, so this is 12% DR. No, sorry, 6% DR and then 12% damage. Uh, down here, um, I played with all three ultimates. Uh, Iron Maelstrom looks cool. It's fun. However, it's like the animation takes too long. I tried uh, Wrath of the Berserker. It doesn't help you any, like, because it cares about Fury Gen, and then, again, you don't spend Fury, so Wrath of the Berserker actually is, like, not good for this build at all. Um, all the Ancient seems to be the best ultimate you could pick here. Um, what you're really looking for, these guys do like no damage, even though the numbers look big and they stay around. They're basically idiots, but the main thing is this. You get 20% attack speed and damage when you eat, when you make ancients are like around. And then Supreme Call Ancients, you probably don't need this point as well, but this also helps a lot with stagger. Um, yeah, Matawax one, 30% chance to stun. He basically like adds like a quarter of stagger bar to the, even like a pit 101 boss. So you don't need this point, but it's really fun to just pop on the boss and then you get a quarter of stagger bar. Um, I took a lot of points out up here, like slang strike. I had a point in, I had a point in like here. I had two points in hope burst and tough as nails. I moved all those points to heavy handed. More crit damage is always good. You don't need this again. This is just what I changed to because the see again I was struggling and I'm like I'm gonna just hit stuff harder, so this is good. Uh Wallop. You want wallop because you in my version of the build you're using your um two hand mace. And they're always vulnerable because of uh, exploit. We're gonna talk about that in a second. And finally, the key, Capstone 1, Unconstrained. Um, this makes it again so your Berserking can last up to 10 seconds, even though you're always getting Berserking anyway. Even when it goes down, you instantly get it back up. That's not the important thing. The important thing here is you get 100% more uh, damage from Berserking. Well, it's 50%, you know what I mean. And, um, it just doubles the effectiveness of when you're Berserk. Uh, every build used to play on Mario Rage, but they changed it to say, core skills instead of all skills. So, Mario Rage is out. Alright, let's go over the Paragon. I also want to talk more about a couple skills when we're done. Um, Strats Paragon, you go this way. It seemed intuitive to go this way to get more damage. Actually, it makes getting this first glyph activated harder. Because this side of the tree has more decks. So you go this way. Um, First one, obviously, Exploit. This is like the best glyph in the game still. Um, when you damage an enemy, they just get vulnerable for 3 seconds automatically. Again, with Bash, you're leaping into monsters, so like instantly your whole screen is vulnerable. Um, you need the decks around it. Like, you need to go this way to get this dex so that it's actually active. After I kept my resistances, I went, I lost, uh, I went back up in the tree and took out all resist points to get um, raw power. You actually can't get raw power. Uh, when you first start out, you have to go up. I'll show you in a second, but you can't get raw power. You gotta uh, get resist early on in this build. You go up here. Yet another node. I took more all resist out to go this way and get the damage reduction completing. Um. 
damage to bleeding. And here's one uh, fire resist. Fire, fire. I, I need to look at my tree and gems and stuff and see if I can take these points out eventually. Um, you go and you get Blood Rage as your first node. Um, enemy should always be bleeding, so you should always have a chance to get this Berserking. Because of uh, how, what you use on the skills, and I'll talk about it when we get to down there. That's the last thing, but yeah, Blood Rage is the first legendary node. Um, obviously, you come up here, you want damage while Berserking, because you're always Berserk. Literally. So, and they come down here. Um, I got Fairy on Kill. Uh, a lot of the guides are using Ramalotis, so they make you go Max Fairy instead. Um, again, I just came over here for more Fire Res. Again, I want to work out how I can take all these points out. Probably even all the way. This take. All of these points out, put them somewhere else. Literally, all of these up to here. Cut them out somehow so that I uh, can get more damage or whatever. But I need to work on my resists. Um, you don't get Warbringer in this build because you don't spend Fury ever, so this would never help you. I thought that like, Warbringer is like the best on a legendary node, not on a build when you never ever spend. Um, this glyph is Rumble. This is insane for this build. The earthquake damage is like basically zero. All this does is help you, um, uh, it, it just synergizes because you're always leaping, so you just always have 10% more damage. It's just a flat 10% damage. Uh, when you get a channeling plan, you can get up to like six earthquakes going, and then this really is insane. Uh, went over. Again, I took points out of resists again and got raw power. Can't go this way until you get your resists cap. But this node is insane, too. This is, I think this actually caps me. This one puts me over 70% on everything. So, you want this node. Again, a lot of guides I, I used went this way to get Max Fury because of Ron Lobbies. I took all these points. Sorry about the weird cut there. I don't know why it stopped recording anyway. Um, talk about going here, and then you got to go up to this tree. Now, here's something I missed. In a lot of guides I read, for some reason, they forgot to go get Carnage. So you need to find some points spare to go this way and get Carnage. Um, again, more damage while Berserking. You want all these nodes, especially around here. Uh, you want Might here. Uh, the Might Glyph specifically makes magic nodes better, which makes this damage while Berserking back like twice as good per node. So you definitely want to... Uh, yeah, you definitely want to do that Put might here and then you need to get this like this point here to activate it um again damage reduction close damage reduction close close to everything all the time obviously it's a spare point i could probably put somewhere um Again, the guide called for some reason. For some reason, whoever made the guides I was using, went, they got this berserking duration instead of damage while berserking. I don't know why. Uh, you're like again always berserk. So uh, again, damage while berserking is what you want. You go up. Uh, damage while fortified. Again, you're always fortified. Uh, you just get 10% more damage off this, and you have to get these weird willpower um, nodes around it to activate it. So that's why this tree looks like that. 
Now you come back to what carnages, you go this way. And we're all berserking damage to elites. Actually, that's where I'm going to move that point. I'm on this here. Damage to elites. So, damage to elites, berserking from this way. Again, it seems intuitive to go down because you get more strength total by going down. But then you can't activate this clip. So again, you need to go up and get this. I hate intelligent stones on Bard. Makes no sense. But anyway, we come. You get this clip. This is higher. And damage all berserking. It's, it's a huge um. This is like getting like four rare nodes, and you take less damage. Uh, you have to um right you have to get arrogance because you can't get uh demolish i'm close to getting the text for this i might go this way if i can find a couple of points to spare but for now i can't get this um because it's it's I have to rework my trade, but anyway, I went this way. I got the Decimator. Uh, each time you make an animal with vulnerable, which animal exploits all of them, you just always 10% more damage. So Decimator is insane too on this. Okay, I think that goes over the Paragon board. <clears throat> now the main thing with this is when you leap you need leap to use a slasher weapon and you also need to be using sword expertise because everything you need everything to bleed um this guarantees everything's bleeding you could use two handed axe expertise However, this guarantees that everything is bleeding. Um, if you use 200 axe, you're going to have to leap a lot more. You're going to have to, uh, again, the slashing weapon ensures that they bleed too. But this just guarantees it works against bosses and everything. Uh, 200 X. you probably get 10% more damage out of 200 X, but there's a chance that you, you won't get the um, Zerking procs. No, two-handed sword. I've tested both, and two-handed sword just seems to, like never ever dropping berserking is good. Um, so yeah, you use your slasher weapon on leap. Obviously, you use your bludgeoning weapon on uh, bash. I think you can only use bludgeoning weapon. So I've been speed running one on ones, but just for the sake of the video, I was going to do a ninety. So the build is insanely fun. It's really good for insanely lazy people. It also requires like insanely good gear. Um, I followed a max roll guide to start, and again, max roll had to gain a lot of resists and whatnot. Um, again, you see the the main gameplay is you just you want to leap onto it like anything you see. Use your shouts if you're ever feeling hurt. Iron skin is just like can't use it. Of course, I got spiders. And that's just what I'm trying to show off. Spiders are probably the deadliest type for this. Uh, because the poison just like seems to kill you no matter how many potions you swing. And the main thing you want to look for... Is not spiders, right? The main thing you want to do is... In big groups of monsters, you want you want actually 
big groups of monsters to be together because it says bash cleaves for extra damage. It doesn't seem to apply on single target. So like those spiders, they just got melted, right? But if it was one little spider, you might have to hit it like two or three times. And I think that's intended. I think the more monsters there are, the more damage it, it Bash does. Basically, you just you want to try to use Leap as much as you can. I don't because I'm busy being lazy bashing stuff. But uh, the more Earthquakes you have going at once, the more damage it does as well. Again, the ultimate only helps you. They see, look, they don't. They barely even hurt these guys. It feels a lot like a D3 ancient where they're just kind of there as like. For aesthetic, they don't really do anything. But the ultimate gives you 20% attack speed, which is really good. And here's the Guardian. Hope it's not the Sharpshooter, because if it's the Sharpshooter, I can't. There's currently a bug with Sharpshooter. Please fix it, where he one-shots you at 25% no matter what. And yeah, that's how I've been running the pit. Um, couple general critiques of the season. I hate that the pit's the only way you can get any fire and you should be able to get it from like three of whispers and stuff too. Um Pollute Reborn is kind of fun. I miss the days of just going to the uh blacksmith and just like upgrading your stuff. I don't I don't get this whole like upgrading stuff twelve times and then it it randomly rolls. I don't like how it randomly rolls one up 25%, it should just roll them up 5% or whatever every time. There should be like 24 at Masterworks. You get like double or like triple the stats in an item, but whatever. Um, been a fun season, but I'm tired of leaping around. It feels like Leap Quick Barb a lot. Um, except for the earthquake does no damage either. It's it's the only thing that's doing damage in this build is bash. So that's it. Uh, that's pretty much what I have to say about it. Like I said, uh, melted heart of ceiling would make you invincible. Um, grandfather would would maybe like be insane with uh, this build plus green gems. Because you would like double, double dip. And, uh, yeah, that's, if you're going to take anything from it, uh, this is an optional. Pain Gorgers is what, like, most of the AoE damage in this build comes from. Yes, Bash Cleaves is nice, but this is actually a mandatory item of the build. So, alright, see ya.